stateless exchange. The modern economy relies on our public institutions to secure contract rights and support cooperative exchange. But how can an industry prosper when its underlying transactions are beyond the reach of those public institutions? This lecture examines cooperative exchange in the diamond industry, which rests wholly on extra-legal enforcement to secure transactions and support a $30 billion industry. The most significant feature of diamond transactions is the unreliability of state courts in enforcing executory contracts. The typical diamond transaction is a credit sale or a brokerage arrangement, situations in which a diamond or a cache of diamonds is in the possession of someone who is not the owner. Because diamonds are easily portable, virtually untraceable, and command high prices throughout the world, a potential thief encounters few obstacles in hiding unpaid for or stolen diamonds from law enforcement officials and selling the valuable diamonds to black market buyers. Accordingly, state courts can neither discipline parties nor seize stolen assets that escape their jurisdictional reach. Even sophisticated legal instruments, such as liens or other devices to secure assets as collateral, cannot reliably prevent diamond theft. Since courts cannot enforce diamond transactions, the diamond industry must depend instead on private mechanisms to enforce contracts. Hence, the industry relies primarily on an elaborate reputation mechanism that can sustain cooperation. The underlying mechanics of reputation mechanisms are well understood. Merchants decide to transact with others based on the past actions of their potential partners. Merchants will refuse to enter contracts with individuals who have failed to fulfill their previous contractual obligations. In a cooperation sustaining equilibrium, the prospect of losing future business is sufficient to deter bad behavior. So the reputation mechanism and the credible threat of coordinated punishments to those with bad reputations is sufficient to induce contractual compliance and support reliable exchange. However well understood the theory is, the practicalities of implementing a reputation mechanism are daunting. The central challenges include, first, facilitating the prompt dissemination of accurate information so each merchant's history is known to all potential exchange partners. And second, imposing a credible punishment to deter misconduct. The diamond industry's rules and structure enable a reputation mechanism that meets these challenges, induces contractual compliance, and thus supports transactional reliability where courts cannot. The diamond industry's central nervous system, the mechanisms that enable the industry's use of reputations and support exchange, lies in its network of diamond bourses that are scattered throughout the world's diamond centers. New York's Diamond Dealers Club, or DDC, located in Manhattan's Diamond District on 47th Street, is organized as a voluntary association with bylaws and mandatory rules for its diamond merchant members. The DDC rules govern much of the members' commercial activity, and the most important among these is the obligation to resolve all disputes before a DDC arbitration panel. Should any dispute arise between merchants, should any merchant claim that another has acted improperly, arbitrators swiftly convene and determine whether there has been wrongdoing. Once arbitrators have reached a conclusion, they announce nothing more than a judgment. They identify the merchant who was found to have failed to comply with a transactional obligation, the date the judgment was decided, and the amount owed. The individual found to be liable has an opportunity to pay his debt, and if he does so, he remains a DDC member in good standing. However, if that individual fails to make payment immediately following the arbitration panel's decision, he is dismissed as a member of the DDC, and his wrongdoing is broadcast throughout the diamond world. 
Picture of the individual in default is placed on the wall of the DDC Central Trading Hall with a caption that details his failure to comply with the arbitration panel's ruling. And news of the individual's default spreads throughout the world's 22 other diamond verses. This system ensures the widespread dissemination of accurate reputational information. Arbitrators have the expertise to identify misconduct, and the global network of diamond bourses ensure that this accurate information is shared with the world's diamond tares. However, arbitrators serve only an informational purpose, with the power only to identify and publicize the individuals who have shirked their obligations to community members. Resting atop these industry-generated and disseminated informational proceedings are privately coordinated sanctions that execute a reputation mechanism. These sanctions ensure that merchants in default cannot obtain further business. Current DDC members will not transact with merchants who were dismissed from the DDC because their own reputations would be discredited by dealing with breaching members. Therefore, failing to maintain a clean record is a necessary prerequisite to continuing business in the industry. How is such a cooperative equilibrium maintained? Rudimentary game theory suggests the threat of coordinated punishment will deter misconduct only if the benefits of long-term cooperation exceed the value of a one-time defection. This trade-off between long-term versus short-term payoffs is particularly stark for diamond merchants since most diamond transactions offer a one-time defection opportunity, that is, stealing a cache of diamonds, that has an enormous payoff. Thus, an equilibrium of long-term cooperation is secured only if long-term payoffs are both assured and appropriately rewarding. The diamond industry's system of rewards and punishments, which is responsible for securing credible contract enforcement, works only because of who the diamond tares are. Diamond tares almost exclusively come from either family businesses or from homogeneous ethnic communities. And industry cooperation rests on a remarkable network of family and community institutions. Family businesses form the backbone of the industry. Because a good reputation is essentially a prerequisite to enjoying profitable dealings, family connections create a valuable and otherwise hard to obtain entryway into the industry. And conversely, fulfilling contractual obligations and maintaining a good reputation both secures a lifetime of business and enables a diamond tear to confer a good reputation and the opportunity to secure future business to one's heirs. Profitability is thus dependent on the quality of a family's reputation, where family reputations are both inherited and bequeathed. Merchants are thus induced to fulfill their contractual obligations throughout their lifetimes, and the fruits of long-term cooperation are assured. In this way, the industry overcomes what game theorists typically describe as an endgame problem. The diamond industry also relies on community institutions that distribute non-economic club goods to merchants from tightly knit ethnic communities. Diamond tares tend to come from ethnically homogeneous communities such as traditionally observant Jews and Palanpuri Jains from Gujarat, India, whose members enjoy partaking in the unique club goods that the community offers. For New York's Jewish merchants, for example, Synagogues and other community religious institutions bestow honors and allocate scarce and non-replicable services to respected members while withholding them from community members in lower repute. Community leaders that distribute these goods contribute to the diamond industry's reputation mechanisms by doling out benefits to cooperating merchants and withholding them from those who defect. Consequently, a merchant's business reputation shapes his reputation in and the enjoyment he derives from 
his religious community. These family and community mechanisms secure long-term cooperation and enforce diamond credit sales despite the enormous temptation to cheat. They provide transactional security where courts cannot. Extra legal enforcement takes the place of legal enforcement. But the keys to success are effective information mechanisms that identify and publicize merchants who have engaged in wrongdoing, and both family and community norms that then inflict coordinated punishment on wrongdoers. Merchants comply with the DDC Arbitration Board and cooperate with fellow diamond tares to reap the financial benefits of a good reputation in the industry and the psychic benefits of a good reputation in their community.